What's going on, everybody? I am Dad Bod. Tonight, we are talking about the spinner law, why it's very important to have good spinners, not janky spinners, and how one mistake could make Kruer come to your house and revoke your Ahorn license. Let's get started. Get in, loser. We're going to the internet. Now, if you think that Kruer is actually going to come to your house and revoke your Ahorn license, he will 100% do it. And I know that you've seen the meme that's posted over and over again, but I'm just going to post it here because it's very important that you just see this. Look at it. Look at it. It's very important. A couple things to take note. Spinners. We do not need to when we are placing our spinners. If you want to group them in uh, clusters to do something like this. I made this mistake long ago. The thing that you're going to get when we do this, let's actually just load it up and I'll show you. So let's do this. Let's save. All right, so when we load here, we can see just an immense amount of spinner jank. And that looks really bad. What we want to do, what we want to make sure we do is just pay attention to that picture. So we don't need any of this stuff. We don't need any of it. Actually, I want to keep the... Eh. Let's remove this. Let's remove this. Let's remove this. And when we're placing our spinners, as long as we place them, you do not want them to really touch. As long as you place them like this, you will see, after we save it, it will reload. They actually fill in when they're a certain distance away from each other. So you don't have to worry about having like gaps unless you make it known, like in the spot in the bottom right there. Um, that is all you really have to know about that. Please, do not overlap your spinners. If you are going to place your spinners using control, uh, because we know that this places them in different spaces, but if you hold control, you can move it by the pixel. You really just want to make sure you're not overlapping too heavily. And also make sure that when you're placing them, you do not overlap an edge. Because if you're like one pixel over the edge, it's going to encroach into your corner's hitbox and it's going to be really janky. That is bad, bad gameplay. Like horribly bad gameplay. All right, so we got rid of that. Now when it comes to actually placing them, I see this mistake made very often, and I made this mistake a ton too. So when we want to fill in large spaces of spinners, I find, and I, like I said, I did this too, we do something like this, where we are just filling in, oops, yeah, sure, we're filling in this way. And maybe we want to do a lot of them. So we do something like this. That could be fine, but at the same time, it's it's not necessarily a great idea aesthetically. And to kind of like explain my train of thought around this, like I want to actually look at crystals, like the real thing. All right, so to do that, we are going to Google crystal formations in caves really quick. And we can see stuff like this. I mean, this actually looks, that's pretty cool. Those look like crystal spinners. Like it looks like if I was in that cave and I land on that, I would die instantly. And that would be very uncomfortable. But the one thing that we're noticing with a lot of these is while there's a familiar like shape and symmetry to the, the crystal formations themselves, their placement in the cave is not as uniform as something like this, where it's just all straight and lined up. So when we look at some of the more, I guess some of the, the more like well done maps, the ones that stand out to us the most are the ones that actually have what you would normally find in nature, and that's like a random formation. So when I think of that, I think of think of a map like Glyph. You know, we look at the crystal formations here and, you know, nothing is uniform. They're kind of spread out. They look, you know, in random order, jagged, but they still look like you can see where you need to go and navigate, so which is good for gameplay. But this is what I would expect from crystal formations in nature. 
And personally, that's why this seems to be a bit more appealing. If you need more examples, just play through this map. You won't find many places where it's just used to fill in. Uh, occasionally we do that, and occasionally, you know, there are patterns of that. But for the most part, this map stays really true to uh, just to that kind of crystal uh, spinner formation. You know, Nipe is another real great example of of like what to do with spinners. Like, I love the placement on these. Like, everything just kind of has a very specific location that it needs to be, but it, it looks... I, I mean, it, it looks very well placed. Everything about the way these are placed, I, I actually really, really like. And if you need examples, like, it's a great map to kind of go through and take a look at because... I mean, they're just all over the place. And like I said, once again, it's what you would expect if you were in nature. It's not a real basic defined spot. It, it looks it looks just randomly placed. But once again, it also gives us a clear path for our gameplay. So it serves two very specific purposes, and that's really important. But I think that's all we have. You know, I, I didn't want this to take very long, but some people still didn't understand necessarily Spinner Law, or they uh, they make a map and then people just post memes saying that your Ahorn license will get revoked, and it will. But they never really explain the why behind it, and I think it's important to kind of think about it in that aspect as well. So I hope this was of use to you guys. Let me know what you thought about it down in the comments below. And stay tuned for the next Ahorn tutorial. Until then, have a great night.